today we'll be uh, quickly going through what is electromagnetic induction part and uh, then uh, how we get uh, inductance self inductance mutual inductance all those things so this faraday's law of electromagnetic induction i think it is known to everyone right uh, so here uh, we can say that whenever magnetic flux linked with a circuit changes that means whenever there is a rate of change of flux then an emf is always induced in it whenever a conductor cut the magnetic flux okay so uh, it is you can write the induced emf like this where e equal to n d phi dt or you can write right like here d psi dt where psi is equal to flux linkage flux linkage means it is a phi linked with linked with n number of turns <clears throat> of coil okay so what does this negative sign signify uh, it indicates that uh, uh, it's try to uh, neutralize its cause like whenever there is some current will be flowing through a coil which will produce phi that you have learned from the magnetic circuit whenever there is a current through it then flux will be produced and whenever this current is changing whenever there is a di dt then of course due to change in the current value phi will also change so uh, d phi dt will also develop and that will link with n number of conductors so n into d phi dt will generate a emf so emf will be developed in such a way, way that it is trying to oppose its uh, cause uh, right like if we have a, a coil and we have a resistor like this and we have a connected battery with it so with rheostat you are changing the current value and that's why if there is a uh, toroid over that there is another coil okay so flux will be linked with it there will be d phi dt and this d phi dt if this is n1 this is equal to n2 so n2 into d phi dt will develop the uh, voltage in such a way say this is equal to e the polarity will be in such a way that it is trying to oppose it like if the flux direction is like in this way then the flux produced in this coil n2 coil 2 coil 2 will be in such a way that it is trying to oppose the current flow through the circuit so this will also induce the vo uh, voltage here and that will try to nullify the current right so that is actually known as the lens law that is also i think you have learned so direction of the induced emf is always such a way that it tends to set up a current opposing the motion or change of the flux responsible for the in, uh, induction of the emf on that coil okay so that is what lens law and that will give you the polarity polarity of the voltage but magnitude will be always same d phi dt and that is equal to n into d psi dt that is equal to n into d phi dt okay so we can develop there will be the induction of the uh, emf either dynamically or statically dynamic dynamically induced emf is what whenever a conductor is moving in a constant magnetic field of flux density b waiver per meter square so here we have given an example uh, like this is a magnetic field and a is the cross section of a wire or conductor lying within a uniform magnetic magnetic field of flux density b waiver per meter square then the arrow attached to a shows the direction of the motion and that you will get from the uh, uh, from where you will get this uh, expression from the framing right hand side rule or uh, if arrow is given so direction is there then this is your right hand and, uh, and Sir? The, sorry uh, continue Sir, can i repeat that i uh, just came for cs class right now I missed that first part. Okay. Huh? Tell me one second. 
Yes, but I have just come. Your voice is actually breaking. I cannot hear anything. Repeat. अरे voice change बंद करना सेन. Okay, let me uh, repeat uh, once again. So I was discussing about the uh, Faraday's law of electromagnetic induction, right? So what does electromagnetic induction tell you? Whenever there is a flux linkage with a coil in a circuit and whenever the there is a rate of change of flux, whenever there is a change of flux, variation in the flux, so that will develop a, or that will induce an EMF in that particular coil. So that EMF can be either produced by dynamically or it can be produced statically. So whenever there is a variation on the flux, so that we can write as the shy dt, flux linkage we call. Shy is your flux linkage. And flux linkage is phi into n. So if it, there are n number of coil, so flux linkage shy will be known as, will be equal to n into phi, right? So n d shy dt will give you the, magnitude of the induced emf and negative sign signifies the polarity so the uh, developed induced emf in such a way that it tends to set up a current opposing to the motion or opposing opposing to the change of the flux produced change of the flux which is responsible for inducing emf in it so here i have shown us example of statically induced emf so we have a battery and we have a rheostat with which we are changing the magnitude of the current this is your uh, coil uh, where the flux is developed this is a toroid or it's a magnetic uh, material through which this flux phi will be linked with the another coil coil two right so this coil will if we join it if if we have another coil and if we close it with another resistance phi will be produced uh, uh, so current will be produced through this coil isn't it the coil number two and this current uh, or the emf induced in this coil will be d shy dt and that into n2 if the number of coil turn is n2 so n2 into d phi dt is the induced emf and its polarity will be in such a way that it is opposing this phi which is set up by the coil one okay that is that is what will give you the symbol E equal to minus n d phi dt. So this is due to the Lenz law, which you have already learned. So electromagnetic induction, uh, then Faraday's uh, Fleming's left hand rule, right hand rule, you have learned. I hope so. So whenever we talk about the dynamically induced EMF, that we can uh, relate with the Fleming's right hand rule. Because right hand rule. is your generator rule isn't it so what does it say here you see we have a uniform magnetic field of flux density b as it is shown and it has a direction like this and you have a coil uh, or you have a conductor which is having a cross section uh, area a it is shown here so a is shown in cross section lying in the uniform magnetic field. The arrow attached to A shows its direction of the motion. So if it is moving, then only there will be the flux linked with the coil. There is a variation of the flux linked with the coil, isn't it? So that movement direction of the uh, motion of uh, conductor is shown as V here in this way, which is perpendicular to the uh, direction of the field. Okay. Consider the condition when A cuts across the right angle to the flux, like here it is shown direction. Suppose L in, is the length lying within the field. So if you, this is your top view, say if you want to see from the side view, this is your conductor and this is your field. So in that way, if you look at, then this is the length of the conductor L. So here, this is a conductor which is of length L. Then what is your area swept by it for uh, uh, this V? So if in time dt, the area swept is L into dx because we can write V as dx dt, isn't it? That is your velocity. So 
for time dt, there will be area sweat, which is L into dx. So this is your dx. And if you want to see the side view, it is like this. If you look from here, then side view is like this. This is your L. So L into dx is your area swept for dt time. And then B into that area will give you the phi. Right? So now d phi dt is equal to what? It is equal to B ddt of B into L into dx. So you can write it as B L V as I have shown here. Okay, so B L V where V, v is the velocity and uh, L is the length of the conductor, B is the flux density. Now, if the conductor moves at an angle theta like this along with the direction of the field, then this sine theta we have to take that component you have to take. So then we can write it as B L V sine theta magnitude wise. And if you want to express in the vector form, then you can write it as L into L is the scalar product, then V into V. So V into B is like this. So uh, the direction will be perpendicular to this. So if you apply the uh, uh, rule for the cross product, uh, this is your velocity uh, vector and this is your v uh, b vector then v cross this is like this and that polarity i have drawn mistakenly in that way so uh, uh, you have to go downwards right and that you can downward to this so you can write it like this the direction of the current which is a cross so if you relate with now Fleming's right hand side rule, then that you can cross check. So middle your, uh, uh, what is your uh, right hand side rule? Your uh, direction of the motion is along your uh, thumb and your uh, index finger will uh, indicate your uh, field. So if the index fin finger is indicating field and thumb is your uh, direction of the well, uh, motion, then your middle finger will show the direction of the current. So if you now try with the right hand side rule, then then that will give you the downward direction of the currents, which you can cross check with this cross product. Okay, so this is dyna dynamically induced EMF and this is called also generator rule when uh, it is induced dynamically. And next we come to statically induced EMF, which is actually uh, uh, developed in case of transformer. Okay. So in transformer, it is a static instrument. There is no uh, dynamics in it. Uh, so what is happening actually, we are changing flux. We are varying flux so that we get a EMF induced in the secondary in case of transformer. So the same thing, it is actually mutually self inductance and due to mutual inductance it is developed in case of transformer suppose we have a magnetic flux through a coil of n turns to be phi in weber in t second uh, say relative movement of the coil and the magnet uh, so that is equal to d phi dt right since each of the lines of the magnetic flux cut the turn one turn can be regarded as the conductor cut by phi waver in t second. So average EMF is as from the Lenz law, it is d phi dt. And for one coil, one turn, it is uh, this d phi dt. So if there are n number of turns, then it is n into d phi dt. Or we can write like if the flux linkage is shy, then that is equal to e equal to minus n minus d shy dt. And from here, we can write flux linkage means n into d phi dt. Okay, so this is actually statically induced EMF. So here we are doing this with the help of a permanent magnet. The same thing you can do with the help of a electromagnet or current through it. Uh, if you uh, if it is a magnetic material and if you pass a current through it and if you vary the magnitude of the current, then of course your flux will be varying keeping this thing without motion. If you keep it at static position and just vary the current through register, then 
it is a statically induced emf so this is the emf induced in a coil due to change of its own flux own flux linked with it so there will be two things one is due to its own flux another is due to the flux from a separate coil that is called mutually uh, induced emf so there are two kind of emf one is self induced emf another is mutually induced emf self induced emf is the uh, emf which is developed due to the variation of its own flux if the current through a coil is changed then the flux linked with its own turn will also change which will produce in it a self induced emf the direction of this emf opposes any change in the flux in fact the very cause of its production as per the lenz law okay energy required to overcome this opposition is supplied by the source of the current definitely because other otherwise there won't be any uh, any uh, flux if it is completely opposite so what is trying to oppose is that will be overcome by taking taking up taking the or drawing the energy from the source of the current that means the battery this property of the coil is due to which it opposes or increases or decreases the current or flux through it is known as self inductance so inductance will try to oppose the uh, 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 i mean uh, direction uh, 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 the cause of it that means the flow of current so if it is decreasing then inductance will try to increase this if it is increasing then inductance will try to decrease it it is quantitatively measured in terms of coefficient of self inductance l usually it is noted as l okay so i'll i'll come to it and this is the property analogous to the inertia of a material body uh, that uh, we'll discuss so here uh, we have a self and mutual inductance which we have demonstrated so you see this is a magnetic material or core it can be air core if it is only air and if there, if there is a magnetic material then the core is a magnetic material that's all and you have a battery you have a switch and you have a resistor through which you are uh, changing the resistance of the uh, coil of this circuit and this is how a uh, defi dt will be developed and if the n number of uh, turns are there in this coil then emf will be equal to n into defi dt so if there is a current i which is produced and uh, there is a current through it that will develop a emf this is polarity plus and minus and this will be also plus and minus which is e em rather we can write so if the battery has a voltage e so this will be in such a way that it is try to reduce this e minus em so that is the effective thing okay so it will try to oppose the flow of the current so as it is trying to resist it so that's why uh, it will not effectively nullify but it will try to resist so if we have a inductive circuit and if there is a uh, if we apply suddenly we make and break the switch the current will flow like this like this is the variation and accordingly you will see that emf induced emf will be developed like this so you can see that immediately it is not responding so if it is having a more number of coil then uh, say you are varying current like this and you are getting a response like this emf induced like this and if it is only having a one or two turn then immediate action will be there so you will be able to see this response so we can say that if there is a uh, mechanical body and we are applying uh, a force on it then acceleration will be there uh, immediate if the mass is less or uh, if we apply a torque on a mechanical body acceleration will be immediate if the moment of inertia is less so that is why your inductance is related with the inertia of a body okay and here this is the example of a self inductance this is because of the uh phi which is produced by the um, uh, produced by the coil itself and that is linked with its own flux and if the situation is like this we have a uh, 
uh, coil and we are passing a current through it, this I current, and that is developed a phi. So phi is having a component of phi S plus phi M. So part of it will link with only with this particular coil and another will link with the other coil. So like this. So phi, e, phi M is the mutually, uh, 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 the phi which is shared by the other coil. So this is a mutual flux linked with the other coil and that will develop also a EMF. And once you close this circuit, a current will be flowing through it so that it can oppose its cause, right? So this is phi M, which is actually a fraction of the phi, say a fraction of the total flux phi. Okay, so you can write this E mutual is equal to K into N2 into D phi DT. Whereas here, if the number of coil here is, it is one for the coil one, then this EMF is equal to N1. So EM1, this is EM2 say, N1 into D phi s dt okay or rather we can write as n1 into 1 minus k into d phi dt so part of it with linked with itself and the other part will be linked with the other coil okay So what is self-inductance? It is a property of the coil that opposes any change in the amount of current flowing through it called the self-inductance or simply the inductance of a, of a circuit. This is due to the self-inductance induced EMF in the coil as I have discussed. So uh, the self-inductance or inductance is developed due to its uh, self-induced EMF by changing the current. It may be noted that self-inductance does not prevent the current from the from changing. It serves only a delay in the change. As I told that self-inductance does not completely prevent the current to flow through it, but it will induce the delay. So if you have a circuit like this, there is a switch, there is a coil which is having an inductance and this is your resistance. So inductance is noted by this. Now, whenever you switch on a circuit, the current response will look like this. Okay, so in steady state, what you will find, it is a DC circuit. So it is a, say, if it is E, then the current through it will be E by R, isn't it? Because in steady state, inductance will have no effect because there is no variation in the current, right? There is no di dt. So it is simply uh, E by R. So E by R is your steady state value of the current. But due to the presence of this inductance, if it is a highly inductive circuit, then that if this is your E, then E by R is that value, which is your current through it. So to reach this E by R, it will take some time. So gradually, slowly, it will go and reach E by R. Whereas if the inductance is very low, if almost negligible, you will see the immediate effect. It will go like this. It will be E by R immediately. And if it is not at all there, then we can get just, just like a step response. There is an immediate action in the I current. So you can see this is actually introduce a delay delay in the change, but it cannot completely nullify it. Cannot it, So your current cannot be totally zero, just it is resisting and in, uh, introducing delay in the system. The inductance of a coil depends on the factor, three factor, that is shape and the number of turn, magnetic material which you are using. So relative permeability of the material surrounding the coil and the speed at which the magnetic field is changing. So once you close the circuit, then after the transient is over, after the switching is over, then what will happen? There is no uh, change of current. So whenever there is no change of current means there is uh, no inductance present. So you will, it will have an initial action. After that, it will just vanish. So these things will be more clear when after completing this part, when from the next class onwards, we'll take the transient. 
uh, analysis. So in transient analysis, we'll see that uh, after some time, after the switching part, gradually the induced EMF will be decaying and it will vanish. Okay, that's why it is not having any steady state action. It may be carefully noted that the inductance make itself felt in a circuit whenever there is a changing current. So if there is no flux variation, changing current means variation of the flux. So if there is no flux variation, then uh, the inductance has no value. And self-inductance of a coil is called the electrical inertia of the coil. As I, I told that we can compare it with the mass or moment of inertia of a mechanical circuit. So it is introducing inertia. That is why it is called the electrical inertia of the coil. Now let us come to the expression. So how uh, self-induced EMF is related with the inductance. So self-induced EMF is actually proportional to the, uh, it is trying to nullify the uh, rate of change of current. So it should be proportional to the rate of change of current and that proportionality cons constant is your inductance. So magnitude wise, we can write that it is equal to E equal to magnitude of E is equal to L into DI by DT. Right. And this as per the Lenz law, we can write N into D phi by DT. So if we integrate, then we get L into I is equal to N into phi. Right. So then what else we can uh, write uh, in the expression of, uh, of your uh, inductance? Inductance can be written L as N phi by I, isn't it? This is the expression of the inductance. Now, what is our phi? If I current is flowing through it, if it is a magnetic circuit, we know that in case of magnetic circuit, phi is equal to B into A. Agree? Already we have learned this magnetic circuit. Now what is B? B is equal to mu 0 mu R into H into A. Right? Then what is our H? As per the Ampere circuit law, H is the magnetic field intensity or strength which is equal to uh, Ni by L where L is the length of the magnetic circuit. So we can write it like Ni by L, which is the uh, length of the magnetic circuit into A is the cross section area of the circuit. So this phi whole thing, if you now substitute here, then you can get L is equal to, L is equal to N into mu 0 mu r n i by l into a into 1 by i. So this i i will cancel out and you are left with mu 0 mu r a n square divided by l where l is the length of the magnetic circuit and a is the cross section area of the magnetic circuit. N is the number of turn. Mu zero is absolute permeability and mu r is the relative permeability of the magnetic material which you have used. Okay. So this is the expression of L and the, its SI unit is Henry. Sir? Yes. Sir, mu r is the relative uh, permeability of the core, core of the uh, coil. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Okay, thank you. So when in case of mutual inductance, what happens in case of mutual so inductance? Can you show previous page once? Yes. Thank you, sir. Okay. So in case of mutual inductance, same thing only uh, we'll just write in case of phi, we'll just write uh, it is phi 1 2, which is linked with your coil N2. 
So uh, this is the phi one two, which is linked with the coil n two, and that is uh, multiplied with n two because it is induced here in coil two, right? So m is the mutual inductance due to this current I one. So m into I one is equal to n two into phi one two. So phi one two is also due to your what? Due to your current I. So this phi one two again you can write like this. Phi one two is equal to B into A, where A is the cross section area. So if you it is a uh, air gap, uh, there is a uh, there is it is a air core circuit. That means there is no magnetic material shown. So that cross section area is the cross section area of this coil. So B into A. So B one two rather we write. Into a, and what is your b12? b12 is equal to mu0 into mu r. Here it is a air core, so mu r is equal to one. Simply we can write as mu0, and uh, then what else into h12? So what is your n? Uh, uh, what is your h here? It is mmf equal to ni by i1 divided by this length so now you have to consider this magnetic circuit and if the length if it is we take it as circular form then if this is your radius r then we can write as 2 pi r so that is your uh, l and uh, that you can put here and then in the same way you can find out the value of mutual inductance so this is already shown here just go through it so this is the expression of your self inductance and this is the expression of your mutual inductance so only thing is here it is n square if it is a n coil and here it is n1 n2 y because here this is uh, in case of this this is n2 so this term will come as n2 and for 1 to n1 will come so n1 n2 term we will get in the expression of the mutual inductance. So this is mutual index inductance. Okay. So now what is the coefficient of the coupling? So coefficient of the coupling between two coil is defined as the fraction of the magnetic fraction of the magnetic flux produced in it. Coefficient of coupling between two coil is defined as the fraction of a magnetic flux produced by the current in one coil that links the other. So uh, if we just go back to the same uh, expression here, what is your, uh, you can write like this, your M into I1, is equal to n1 uh, n2 into psi 1 2 isn't it and in the same way if we have a coil like this this is your i1 current it is an air core circuit. Let us assume for the simplicity. And if this is your I2. So what is your, if this is phi 1, 2 for both the coil, if we can write again, mutual inductance for I2 is equal to N1 into phi 1, 2. So what you can write, you can write that in both sides, if we can write this is M12 and M21. So these are same actually, M12 equal to M21. For this particular circuit, for any circuit which is mutually coupled, this mutually coupled phi cannot change. So that is why mutual inductance also cannot be uh, uh, different. That is why if we put the expression of this, so your m square will be equal to n1 
pi 1 2 by i 2 into into phi 1 2 into i 1. So if you just change their position, like if you bring i 1 here and if you bring i 2 here, this side, you can write like this. Now, as I told that phi 1, 2 is a fraction of total phi. So it is this. So that if we substitute, it will become k1, k2 into n1 phi 1 by phi 1 n2 phi 2 by i2. So we can write like m equal to k1 k2. Here we can write l1 Hello, am I audible? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So uh, here we can show that uh, if, if you take if you take now square root, your aim will be equal to uh, root over k1 k2 into l1 l2 so mutually inductance is proportional to l1 l2 now when we take this k1 is the full fully coupled so there is no uh, nothing left with the uh, uh, self inductance this is the ideal if that is the ideal situation then we can put k1 equal to 1 and k2 equal to uh, one so we get m is equal to l1 l2 okay so uh, now if we have the uh, series inductors in series then uh, there will be uh, a mutual inductance between these two coil as we can sh uh, see here so it is adding and it is resisting or opposing How come we write like this? It is adding and opposing. We can write because by the change of the flux, so direction of the current. If current is flowing through this, this their south pole will be produced, north pole will be produced, and the flux direction will be like this. And in the same way, if it is current is going the same way, and if it is wound in the same manner, then here also South Pole and North Pole, it will go like this. So these two are additive. And whenever it is additive, then uh, the uh, mutual inductance can be written as L1 plus L2 plus 2M. So how can you write like this? This is your uh, L1. So for the first one, same current I1 is flowing through it. So in the EM is equal to L1 di1 dt, magnitude wise I'm writing, plus M into di1 di by dt, because it is adding. And the same way for the second coil, L2 into di dt plus M into di dt because it is adding so we can write it as l1 l2 plus 2m di dt which is your l equivalent 
DITT. So it is the equivalent inductance, just like the series resistance. We can find when the inductors in series and when we have this dot convention. So whenever they're adding, just note the dot convention. So current is entering like this. Here also current is entering like this. So the same direction clockwise clockwise. So we put two dots here. So this two dot in the beginning only if we put these two dot that indicates it is adding. And if we uh, draw the circuit in the other way, so it is in the other way around. So it is in pole here. It is counterclockwise. So here is in the field line will produce like this. Polarity is this here n means they'll generate and they're opposing. So in that case, we'll put the dot like this, like the way it is shown. So they have not shown exactly the uh, direction of the winding of winding, uh, like the nature of the winding, just by presenting these two dot in the two different location. So the first one it is entering and for for second one is outgoing means the mutual inductance is opposing so it is minus and here it is plus so what we'll do in place of plus we'll just put l1 minus m didt plus l2 minus m didt that's all and then if we add them up we'll get l equivalent is equal to l1 l2 minus 2m okay so your effective thing is we can write plus minus as per the dot convention the equivalent inductance so if we have a complicated circuit and we have a uh, two uh, depending on the dot convention we can write plus or minus for the mutual one so whenever your m is equal to zero then it is simply l1 plus l2 just like your resistance which is r1 and r2 so now let us come to the inductance which are inductor which are in parallel and we'll take up the direction of the current here if we can see this is clockwise here also it is clockwise so here it is north pole and south pole north pole and south pole kind of thing so flux line is producing here and here also flux line will be produced like this so they are opposing one another so we'll take m which is minus so in that case what we'll write in for this particular uh, thing for this particular uh, diagram we can first write i is equal to i1 plus i2 so di dt is equal to di1 dt plus di2 dt right this is equation one then we can find out the drop across it drop is equal to l1 into di1 dt minus m into di2 dt similarly l2 into di2 dt sorry it should be uh, uh, the other way around it should be uh, opposing now we'll, we'll write it like this di1 dt here So now we can write L1 minus M into DI1 DT is equal to L2 minus M into DI2 DT. So we can write DI1 DT is equal to L2 minus M by L1 minus M uh, DI2 i2 dt isn't it so if you substitute the whole thing in equation one then you can write di dt is equal to l2 minus m by l1 minus m plus one into di2 dt So L1, L2 minus 2M by L1 minus M. So this you can write. So your DI2 DT you can write in terms of 
di dt as l1 minus m divided by l1 l2 minus 2m into di dt. Now what is this expression? What is the expression, voltage expression? It is L2, di d2, we can write, uh, voltage is equal to, we can write L2 into di2 dt. So you simply put their value here. V is equal to L2 into di2 dt. So if you substitute here, you can get the value in terms of V is equal to some L equivalent to di dt, and then just write it there and you will get the overall expression, okay, for the uh, inductors. And uh, whenever you have, it is actually L2 into L1 minus M by L1 plus L2 minus 2M. So this is your overall expression. So whenever your M becomes zero, whenever there is no mutual inductance present, it is simply L1, L2 divided by L1 plus L2. So just like the parallel combination of two resistors, okay. So uh, with this, uh, uh, I'll just close today's class. And uh, from the next, next class onwards, we'll try to find out the uh, uh, transient whenever we have a inductance and what happens whenever we have capacitance and resistance together for the switching what kind of transient we'll expect and here is the expression of the energy stored in the magnetic circuit that it is very simple energy is equal to uh, voltage into current a uh, power equal to voltage into current and if you integrate it it will become half li square and now when you put the value of inductance, self-inductance, you will get this. This L won't be actually present. This I should remove. So this is the expression. So magnetic energy per volume, A into L is the volume of the magnetic material. So that is equal to half into BH. So it is the expression of the of your uh, so we can also show that the uh, area under BH curve is equal to your magnetic energy. So the, this is all about your uh, magnetic circuit, which is there in this particular course. And everything which you have learned that uh, electric, uh, magnetically, uh, dynamically induced EMF for the generators, all those things are also applicable. Uh, so uh, I'll ask you to go through your 10 plus 2 uh, level, uh, that part of your 10 plus 2 level course. So with this, our magnetic circuit is complete. From the next class onwards, we'll start the uh, transient analysis. Okay. Sir, one doubt is there. Huh, okay, tell. Sir, while, uh, while estimating the direction of uh, fluxes for the self-inductance and the mutual inductance, so mutual inductance, you are giving the value that these are opposing, so it will be minus. And if it is yielding, then it will be plus. So sir, for self-inductance, we'll not do anything like that because that also depends on direction of current or it will not depend self-inductance. The plus now, minus. in case of self-inductance, we have, well, let us come back here. Uh, this is the thing, no? Self-inductance, the uh, uh, there'll be, if we just note it down, there, there is no opposing thing, no? Here, whenever you have a, a flux line, Sorry, I'll just put it in there. So you have a current through it and this we can see again, it is a South Pole, North Pole. So flux line will be produced like this. And this flux will produced in, in such a way that a EMF is induced in the circuit and this EMF should have a polarity which will oppose your flow of current. So it will be automatically developed in that a way, in such a way that it is uh, opposing its uh, flow of this current, right? Oppos try to oppose its uh, cause. But whenever you have a, another one like here, so here we have a, a chance like uh, the way we are, this flux is produced whenever we energize this circuit as well. So this will have a flux which will aid this flux. Anyway, this is hold like here, 
this flux which is produced for the self inductance of this particular coil will try to oppose the polarity so if it is the polarity here that polarity will be this only but for the mutual inductance part mutual inductance part what happened other coil may be adding this flux so whenever it is adding then that will be added up so then uh, the self inductance l1 plus m1 will come up but whenever it is opposing then this inductance property that means its electrical inertia will try to reduce if the flux is less so in that case we'll write l1 minus m1 but that calculation we cannot do here because there is no such uh, another circuit which is adding or opposing this flux lines whatever flux lines is developed that is due to the coil only which is present here there is no other coil or no other flux or no other magnet around or magnetic field around which is adding or opposing this flux so whatever l is there it will be l only and that l will try to develop a em which is resisting the polarity right am i clear now yes sir yes sir so sir basically the series sir, actually i had the doubt in that series circuit why uh, the and sign of l is not uh, been taken care of so uh, so sir so, basically because both the coils will oppose the current in the principal circuit but uh, the mutual inductance will depend on the directions which in the, uh, the of the uh, like uh, flux direction here if, the there is, uh, if there is no no mutual inductance then uh, m is zero means it is mutually exclusive there is no uh, sharing between these two coil if we take that ideal condition if it is done in such a way then this em1 will be if this is your uh, total e this em e will be such that it is em1 plus em2 so polarity will be what plus minus plus minus in that way this is em2 so em1 is nothing but it is l1 into di dt and this is equal to l2 into di dt that's all there is no uh, interconnection between this uh, l1 and l2 so it cannot increase l2 or cannot even decrease l2 right or whenever it is adding we write the same thing as l1 plus m here and l2 plus m here in that way okay so that is not actually or we can write as minus also so whenever there is no sharing between these two whatever em is produced that is exclusively for this particular coil l1 right so there is no uh, flux which is adding or opposing this flux produced by the uh, current through it for this particular coil so whatever flux is produced it is produced in such a way that we are uh, we are developing or inducing an emf which is having a opposite polarity of the uh, of this e okay okay sir thank you sir sir yes sir the mutual inductance value em is same for series and parallel circuit both means mm -hmm. uh, for yes, series sir. for for ha uh, huh, this one is same okay sir this k this one okay we, uh, uh, there are many problem i don't know whether i will get time or not so interesting problem which are interesting that is already solved in the book by mehta mehta and whatever i taught today uh, it is also everything you will get it in the book by mehta so i will re request you to go through this path and solve the problem which are specifically solved in the ex example and then you try exercise because example you you will find many interesting problems are given okay so uh, so i am not just simply uh, simply copying from there and solving so you, i'll ask you to refer that and then uh, try to go through the exercise and the example okay okay sir. okay thank you sir okay okay that is for all for today uh, in from the next class we'll start the uh, uh, your uh, uh, transient analysis for the rl and rc circuit okay thank you thank you sir thank you sir thank you sir